Now, this is the video that really showed me, like, oh, my gosh, this is way deeper than what I thought. Like, and I'm going to get more into, like, first of all, before I get into that video, I just want to, what is it? So, I wish I could put it up on the screen, but it's okay. So. This is his proof. This is the discussion. This is the discussion that he had with uh, his professor when he says that the number zero doesn't exist. Right? So he says, okay, so it's fair to say that the concept of zero, ha this is from his book. Um, so it's fair to say that the concept of zero has been either misrepresented misinterpreted or completely misunderstood i once had a debate with an esteemed professor of mathematics from chicago university concerning the uh ration of zero um it went as follows i was on a pub i guess publicity tour for the release of the feature film retails and we just so happened to be having dinner at the montage resort in dana point california i made the statement that there was no such thing as zero he looked at me with a puzzled look upon his face for a moment and then the professor said let's say you had an apple and I had an apple and you gave me your apple. How many apples do you have? I said, I have two apples. So the professor said, you don't understand. You gave me your apple. No, you don't understand. As long as you are still inside this universe, whatever you have, I have because... Because everything in this universe is connected to everything else. Even if you could take my apple and place it into an adjacent universe, I would still have two apples because as long as the universe is touching the universe, then everything in that universe is still connected to and influenced by every single atom in this universe. Therefore, my giving you an apple is paramount to me transferring my apple from left hand to my right hand because all things are one. It may have been a bit too philosophical for him, <laughs> but the first law of thermodynamics holds true here. Oh my gosh, energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred or transformed. Does that help in understanding the... Um, illogical nature of our current concept and practice associated with zero nope no it does not because that makes absolutely no sense it makes zero sense or can i not say that you know so if you really like think about it though think about that practically yo like if i have z you know okay you know terrence howard he was in an iron man movie and he was upset because they didn't give him enough money couldn't you just say that everything in the universe that is theirs is yours? So you, if, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. made this amount of money, then that means you have that same amount of money because everything in the universe is yours. That's what you're saying. Or you could say, I need some more zeros. Even, even putting zero in like the number 100 like it, it's it has value, but to say that, come on, bro, it's so simple. Like, if you have it, if I have one cup, and if I if I were to steal something from you, you can't say you stole this from me anymore because you say that everything is yours in the universe. Like this type of stuff, it's like it's it's almost it's almost like petty language. Like you know when somebody comes up with a new thought. They get triggered because they're so focused on correcting you. They're so focused on correcting you on that thought. I came up with a new way to explain this. And every time you say that, I'm going to debunk it. 
But it's like, he's so focused on his wording of zero that he's missing the point that, yo, zero is the absence of a number, it's the absence of a thing. So you can't say, you can't say zero doesn't exist because how do you explain when something is taken from you? How much do you have? Like, you, we don't know how, what are you going to do if somebody steals something from you? How are you going to explain what happened? Well, someone transferred. <laughs> someone transferred my car into their garage. Okay, well, that's fine. You still own it, right? You still have a car, right? Well, yeah. So what's the problem, sir? Ollie, you still have the car. He just transferred it. He just transferred your car to another garage. That's not the place that's usually... You get what I'm saying. You know, things like this just are very interesting to me, I will say. I can't believe he believes that. But but I'm going to show you, man, where this rabbit hole goes. Because y'all think this man studied some stuff. People don't just fall upon. Not, like, I know we can say stuff and we can sound crazy. But people don't just fall on some nonsense type talking. This is not just oh, like I can say stuff and I can sound really crazy. If we get into a discussion about, um, you know, like like I know there are words that sound really, you know, some of the stuff that uh, Terrence Howard speaks on and on a Joe Rogan podcast. I'm sure like a lot of that stuff was true. I'm sure. And that's all the devil got to do to you is tell you some truth to get you to believe everything else. If a person prophesies to you and they tell you everything that you did when you were at home and then what you went through exactly by detail, then you trust them way too much after that because the devil can also tell you truth about yourself as well. But we want to listen to the person that sounds so smart, that is so convincing, that wants to put fear in us because if we don't catch on, What's going to happen to it? all these tactics, tactics. And the first person I try to look at is myself. Like if I'm trying to manipulate someone, then that means that I have already manipulated myself into believing this. I've already convinced myself most likely that what I'm saying is true. And I'm not 100% sure, but I'm telling myself I'm 100% sure. Because... I saw the door open. The first thing I said, and, I, and I'm all for, I believe in God. I believe that spiritual things happen. But if I see a door open, my first thought, oh, look at God. Like, just calm down. Like, you know, one thing I learned from some atheists is a little skepticism is not a bad thing. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to go as far as an atheist. But if the door opens, it could be that your house is a little off level. I'm just saying, just slow your roll. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but everything through prayer and supplication. So if you say something, if you see something crazy like that, just pray on it. It may be some natural phenomenon. It may be some natural thing that happened and you're assuming it's spiritual just because you heard the prophet get really detailed with you. I mean, I, I'm not going to go as far as say maybe he talked to somebody before the service, but maybe the reason he said you're so depressed and so hurt is because he looked at your face and he saw it. Because you're showing your hand very well. It may be you think that you're hiding it. And people can see you don't even want to be here. I could look at somebody in the face and tell them they don't want to be here. I don't have to be no prophet. So you got to pay attention to those things, man. That's. Whoo, hallelujah.